First, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. So where are you from originally? Um, so originally I was born in um, Columbia, South Carolina, but I grew up in Gaffney, South Carolina. But I moved around a lot as a kid. So like throughout my life, I've lived in Connecticut, Tennessee. Um, even at one point I lived in Belgium for like a year and a half. Sure. Um, like in um, going from like third to fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And then I lived in Indiana the most. I've been in Indiana for like eight and a half years. That might be wrong. I don't even know. It's been too long. But um, <laughs> with that, like, it's just been super, like, it's like, I say I'm from Indiana. That's why I said my name was Midwest instead of being like Southwest or like yeah. some, some other thing like that. Because I just felt every single time I moved around, I wasn't able to get grounded in the community that well. Sure. So when I was able to like finally get in one place and stay in one place mm -hmm. and like, stay set, mm -hmm. it made everything else like a hundred times better. Mm -hmm. And it made me actually be able to get familiar with the place I lived in. So yeah. I say I'm from Indiana and cause that's just the place I associate myself with the most. You said you lived in Belgium for a year. Yeah. Uh, why did you live in Belgium for a year? So the main cause for, my, for me and my family moving around a lot was my mom's job. Mm -hmm. um, and so she's in human resources. And so with that, every single time we would start to get settled down, feel like we're about to live in a place, she would get another job offer that was entirely better than the, her previous position. And then she would end up going to get the, then we end up moving to make sure that we can still get that job and so that she could have the money for it and like, and to get a higher amount of income and stuff like that. So every single time we move was an upgrade of like pay for her in a, in a way and just upgrade her circumstances and conditions for her. And so we moved to Belgium. Um, she was working for international paper. Um, and so while she was there, they wanted her to be um, a part of her team in Belgium. So it was like, okay, so we moved to Waterloo, Belgium. And I went to um, St. John's International School while I was there. And man, it was weird. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it was weird adjusting from the United States to having to drive on the opposite side of the road, different wheels on the different side of the car. Like, it was a lot to digest, but at the same time, it was the same thing when you move back, because then you have to get accustomed to the United States again. So I couldn't drive at the time, because I was very young, like, but I got my first iPod over there. I used to be able to speak French like really, really well. Lost that, but um, I still have like the, like, I can still do like, I can say like bonjour and like the basics of French. But after that, you will not get a word out of me that like anything French related. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that's really about it. Yeah. Who were some of your musical influences growing up? Ooh, um, big musical influences right now, I think. Well, not even right now, just growing up. I grew up listening to a lot of R&B and a lot of just like old hip hop, like Nas, J. Cole, um, J. Cole more when I started turning to a teenager, but um, heavily on just Nas, Tribe Called Quest, even some, um, and a lot of Kanye West. Like Kanye West is one of the biggest people I, like, I'm inspired by, or I draw inspiration from, because he's just like, he's just able to do everything himself and just have that self, that, that sense of independence just makes everything else like, like on a grand scheme of things to see how big he's gotten mm -hmm. and even like then he just become like the like the first black bil billionaire million I don't, I don't know what it is i don't know mm -hmm. what the milestone is but he became the first black something mm -hmm. it's just not coming to my head right now mm -hmm. but it's just that his individuality and even although people like may see him as crazy you never really know what's going on with somebody so I, like it, you can't really judge them for that mm -hmm. and so but i also listen to a lot of like neo alicia keys Aaliyah, a lot of r&b growing up cause that's what my mom listened to all the time so you would always either hear that or some hip hop playing around the house or just some, just a little mix of everything because my parents just like music. Like my, if you go downstairs in my basement, you can literally, we have a CD player specifically for all the CDs that they've accumulated over the years so that they can go back and listen to some of them. Like they have, um, they have a Barry Bond CD. They have like, like OG Kanye, like, like stuff. I was like, what? But they have, um, I think my dad is every Kanye album on, on DVD from college, um, from the very first of the um, the Barry Bond series, like from when he released like the demos, and then late, and then um, late registration, then college dropout, then graduation, and then from there, I, th I don't think he might have like the Life of Pablo and stuff, but all the older stuff he really has. And so that's the stuff that I've been like the most into. At what point did you start creating music? Um, I started creating music. Well, I've been like involved in music ever since like elementary school. Like I want to say fourth fourth grade all the way up until 
sophomore sophomore year, I was in doing something musically related at school. Mm-hmm. Like I um, I was in band class um, throughout all the middle school because they in my school they require it. So they require you take some sort of fine arts. So it can either be acting, it could be band, it could be orchestra, hmm. or it could be vocal class. And so throughout all the elementary, all the, all the elementary, I took vocal. Like I was, I was a singer, hmm. everything like that. But then when it got to middle school, I switched entirely over to garage. So not garage. I almost said garage band. But uh, um, talking about like, I used to play trumpet and baritone. Like I used to be heavy brass player in the band up until sophomore year. And then once sophomore year hit, I kind of stopped. Ta- I I stopped taking band because the teacher kind of made me a little uh, angry sometimes. But um, um, also because I wanted to start focusing on making my music outside of school. And so sophomore year is when I really started like doing doing music. Sure, has it been weird growing as an artist and gaining more of a fan base in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, it's been really weird because at the same time people are going and talking about how bad their year's been Mm -hmm. but at the same time that it might have been one of my best years like as an artist and it's like i i I can see why you say that but at the same time i can't relate to that Mm -hmm. because i've had so much growth just as an artist as a person and just as a whole individual like it's like you saw me go from being like for example an infant to growing up into an adult like musically wise even though i'm not even all the way as like an adult i still make mistakes and stuff like that but um it really allowed me to just like the pandemic and everything like quarantine that helped me get more invested in my sound and like actually like start to mix and master my vocals like more professionally learn like what a limiter was what all these things and FL studio works that's what our that's the um designated audio workspace that i use i use that to record and do all my things in and so having quarantine and all that stuff really like allowed me to like deep dive into it and get everything in and then that was some of, like in quarantine i made some of the most like original like no like no influence from this like any category or anything himself just an extension of myself type of music that it just you just saw it like other people gravitated towards because they haven't heard something like they might have heard the type of like sound or the type of like direction i was going in but they never heard it they had never heard it in the way that i did it or like the way that i like rap on it and stuff like that mm-hmm. last year you dropped your project secrets what was the creation process of that tape like so um from the jump i always said i wanted to put out a body of work just to have as an artist Mm -hmm. because i feel like that's really important to have um something that's an extension of yourself Mm -hmm. and just to have something that you believe at the at whatever point of your life you put it out at as your best work and so with that i really um wanted to just let people understand that i i don't want like like i never liked really getting boxed into categories like I want people to understand that when they can listen to it, they can listen to it for an experience more than they listen to it just for like a musical like com- compilation of songs. Like, I want the songs to be back to back and like bring you from this vibe to this vibe to this vibe to this vibe to this vibe, like congruently, like very like back to back to back to back continuously. And um, I was really, really like really found and like fond of just like all of, like the older like um, like hip hop tapes and stuff like that that have like. Like the light, like a big influence for me also is Pierre Bourne, because if you listen back to the life of Pierre, like the first one or the second one, or even just the life of Pierre Four that he just dropped, you can hear that he transitions every single song into one another, and that makes the entire like listening experience even better than the like than just like for example if a song like jump from an R and B song to like a mosh pit song or to like punching somebody in the face type of song like. It just it'll throw off the vibe a little bit, but you'll still get back into it. But every time a new song comes on, it kind of just switches up the groove. Mm. And so with that, I really wanted to just um, make some. I really just sat down. I was like, I want to make some good music. Like I want to make something that I know I'm gonna look back upon and be like, okay, it's not the best, but hey, at that point in my time, I made something that I really enjoyed, or I did something that I really had like fun doing, and I want to do it again. Now, I mean, transitions in between songs of projects are so important. Very yeah. like overlooked thing, but it makes the, the tape that much better. Exactly. So on your project, you have four features. How did you go about picking those artists to work with? So if I'm being entirely honest, they all just sound cool. Mm-hmm. Like they all have their own, like they all have their own sounds. Like they mm-hmm. don't, you don't hear them sounding like everybody else that does the type of music that I make, like the digicore, the hyper pop, whatever you want to categorize it as. Mm-hmm. Like. You don't hear them, you don't hear a lot of people doing it in the way that they do it. Like with, like that's why I chose 8485 because she's one of the like only like um, women in the scene that are actually like 
doing it like to like that are actually like making a name for themselves and like being very very original with their work. I'm not saying that there aren't other people that do it, but mm-hmm. she's just one of the people that does it to such an amazing like amazing like amazing way of doing it that it just makes it even better. Mm-hmm. And then same with Black Winter Wells, and then with Eric. Um, Eric is I, I knew Eric ever since he was like small. I'm not gonna say like small small, but after he dropped his second tape, um, he had this one song with Kevin Kazi. And so he's like an underground, um, like to some people he's an underground legend. Like a lot of people like like him and stuff like that. He's really cool, nice dude. But um, with that, um, I just wanted Eric to get on it because I know that he would fit the vibe of it. Like the one song we had, Decay, because he just like his essence and just like his voice and all that stuff is just something that you can't really get from anybody else. Because he just has this sort of like his lyrics, the way he layers his vocals, like. You can, it's easy to layer vocals, but to do it in a sense where it, you can get three different octaves of vocals, but make it seem like it's one is very, very hard and difficult to pull off. Mm-hmm. And so for the features on that album, I was like, I really, really wanted to just make sure that people understood that it's always cool to have individual and single songs, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you shouldn't base everything around that. Because if you if you want to make a song with your friends, go out and make a song with your friends. Like That's going to be something you're going to have fun doing. Have fun with making music. You shouldn't just do it if it's like a job or a pastime or something like that. So you were included in SoundCloud's Digicore mini documentary? Yeah. How does it feel to be seen as like a face of that brand new scene? It feels like sometimes even unbelievable to me because just um, coming from somebody who started from making music on a Beats headphone, like actually like microphone on GarageBand, um, to being able to say that I'm the face of a certain type of sound or genre is something that is really, it takes a while to take in. But when you take it in, you realize that it's something that I'm super proud of because there really hasn't been like, um, cause just like, it's really hard. It's really been hard for a lot of like, just black teenagers like myself to just speak up about a lot of like mental health and a lot of just talking about sensitive topics like that. Um, that matter because sometimes if you do those things you get seen as like oh he's weak he's like lame all these things stuff like that and if you've shown to be vulnerable then next thing you know people think that you're like a pussy or something like that when that's not even the case it's more manly to speak up about your emotions and how you feel than keeping everything in and just suppressing everything simply because of the way that like social media or the way that culture has just made you like become as a person and so becoming like a face for the scene and just becoming somebody that everybody can like just look at and be like, oh, so he he's like one of the people in this type of genre, or this type of music. It's just something that I I couldn't be happier for because it's just, I really, really just love it because I want people to understand that like, especially black kids that it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to like do all these things that people might see as like out of the norm or something like that because as soon as you conform to standards, you're not, you lose your originality, your own personality. You're just falling in the crowd. You're not, like straying from it and being yourself yeah and i think some of the best artists that like i'm fans of you're probably fans of are artists that are vulnerable in their music because then you're uh relatable to like your fan base exactly yeah um so like this whether you want to call it hyper pop or digicore but that scene is one of the most diverse and accepting scenes to ever occur in music how does it feel to have that like creative freedom to express your what you're feeling in any way that you want it's so nice because if i wanted to i could get on a literal like boom bap beat or like some or take a old wu-tang song and resample it or something along like that and put like distorted 808s or like a synth on it and then just talk about something that i find joy in like even like just playing video games or just like talking about like something that you might have gone through mentally physically or like all these things and it's just an accepting space too, so you can be yourself, you can be vulnerable, and people won't judge you for that. They'll literally just be like, "Hey, I've been at that same place. I understand what you're going through. Like, I appreciate you, like, for speaking out on these things." Because a lot of times, some people, like, for example, like, if you look at a lot of other like scenes and cultures and stuff like that, like people who paint their nails and stuff like that and do all these other things are seen as like gay or like, or they're seen as like very, very outlandish, and they don't, and because men aren't supposed to do that, it's feminine and stuff like that. Like um, Yachty, Juice World, X, like all of them used to paint their nails, but they didn't have any problems with it. But when somebody like that isn't big and doesn't have a platform for themselves, does it? It's like very, very outlandish. And I don't have mine painted, but I do that because mm-hmm. it's fun. It's like cool. It's a way of expressing yourself. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people in the scene do it too, and a lot of people just accept people for who they are instead of just looking at stuff at face value. Like, mm-hmm. 
you could be like like it's it kind of it's kind of sucks sometimes because you could be a dick but everybody will acknowledge how much you are good at music like they'll like, like you could be like the most like like the biggest jerk in the world but if you make good music they'll acknowledge that you make good music mm. and they'll still like and it just allows people to um change for the better too because if they see something or say something wrong people will call them out for it but they'll call them out in a constructive way right. so that they can be, go back understand what they did and then come back as a better person for it too uh, were your classmates or are your classmates in high school receptive to the music that you've been making? The thing is, is that I barely told anybody at my school because I didn't really want to be like that. Yo, I'm a new SoundCloud okay. rapper <laughs> coming out. Like, mm. I don't want to be that kid. I just wanted to be myself, and so I really just let them find it, like find it on their own. So like, a lot of people really only started to find it like junior and senior year when I started to get like the bigger, like noticeable things, like maybe like. Like recently, my song was on Snapchat. Like it got added. Like trying got added on Snapchat. It got added to some a couple Spotify playlists, Apple playlists, and stuff like that. And that's when people started to realize that hey, wait a minute, this sounds like Edgar. Edgar goes to my school. Wait, like like and they started to connect the dots, and a lot of people was like hit me up about that. And it's super cool to see that. But at the same time, I don't ever want to force my like my music on anybody because I feel like that just ruins the purpose of like. Cause some of the best like artists I listen to right now, I stumbled upon. Like I was listening to some music and something came up on autoplay, and then I listened to one of their songs. Then next thing you know, I'm going on an entire like deep dive of their discography. So what are you working on currently? Uh, right now, I just concluded work on my um, next project coming out called Summer O Three, mm -hmm. and so um, seven songs, which um, I think. Three of the songs have already been released, so it's four new songs. Mm -hmm. It's just an EP, just to hold some people over, put out some new music, and now people have another just another listen through of like a more developed and more mature version of myself. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I've been working on that, and then um, I've also just been doing a lot of stuff like just connections wise. Mm -hmm. Like I've been making a lot of really like nice like having like good like conversations and starting to create friendships with people that are a lot bigger than me than I expected to ever hit me up. But it's really cool to do that because um, they don't, I don't see people for like their popularity at all. I see them for who they are as a person. Like and you could be like, like if for example, if, like you could be um like Drake, for example. I'll definitely fanboy out in like silence or something. Like I'll, like I'll hold it in, but I won't show it over text. I'll just talk to them like it's a normal conversation because um at the end of the day, everybody's human. Like, regardless if they have a platform or not, everybody's still the same person at the end of the day. Well, not the same person, but same anatomical. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do any other forms of art inspire you other than music? Um, some. Um, I've really been into just, um, as a kid, TV. Like, watching a lot of TV shows. Mm -hmm. A lot of just um, media as a whole. Like, I grew up watching either like you saw me watching boomerang cartoon network and nickelodeon like that's all i would watch as a kid like yeah. and just all of that like childhood nostalgia and just like like silliness and stupidness just made it feel like, like i could be like myself i could be reckless to an extent like not too reckless but mm -hmm. i could do I, I could pave my own road for myself and i don't have to look back and worry about what people say about it mm -hmm. and like i can do all these things and make this type of music without people criticizing it every five seconds because i don't really like I'll take constructive criticism, but if you're gonna say something negative about it, I'm not really gonna care for it because I probably have heard it before. <laughs> and um, that and some art as well, along with just a lot of, um, a lot. But I think a really big thing that um, influenced me was skate culture. And, and a lot of people really don't see that, but um, I watched, like I, always, I had a tech deck when I was younger, like, had, I was doing all the tricks, did a little like tray flip, maybe a little kick mm -hmm. flip, stuff like that. I started skating, stopped because I sucked. Mm -hmm. I could barely get an ollie off the ground. Mm -hmm. I'm getting better because I can actually ollie now and like do the basics and stuff. But um, I suck well because I and I haven't practiced since like quarantine started because the board's just kind of been sitting there looking at me like, hey, you you gonna use me or like, I was like eh, not today. Mm -hmm. Like this really depends on my mood, but um. Skate culture really influenced me a lot, just the form of camaraderie and just being surrounded by people that you can, that all have the same interests, like that all have like the same goals or like the 
just do the thing that they do for fun. Like that's like something I really like, really look up to, and just that whole like community and feeling is just super cool. Mm -hmm. What were some artists that you want to work with in the future? Ooh, that's hard. Um, in the future, definitely want to work with Sofago. Um, Fago's been going nuts. Um, Autumn. Um, wouldn't mind a J Cole feature, even though it's a little outlandish, but um, especially for like the type of music I make. But at the same time, I don't care. Like he's J Cole. Like who wouldn't want a J Cole feature? Um, Kanye easily. Um, really, really been into Baby Keem recently. Yeah. Recently, Baby Keem and um, some Kendrick. Uh, maybe a D Savage feature. Like mm -hmm. maybe just maybe record a little something in his car, something like that. I don't know. But, um, um, a lot of other stuff that just like I just have a really like big list stop it's not it's like I'm blanking a little bit but at the same time I think the really big ones is really just um, oh, also Kobe I wouldn't like yeah, why would I not work with SSG Kobe like he's super tough um, and then if they were still alive I would really like I would literally like give a, my left leg to work with Juice World or X because they're just some of the biggest inspirations that I've had just making music. Like Juice WRLD and X made me understand that it's okay to open up about a lot of things that you might keep inside. It's okay to be, to put your um your heart into your music. It's like you don't have to just put material or write things to that make a good song into your music. You can put how you're feeling, you can put all these feelings and emotions into your songs instead of just it being, you're making music. Like, mm -hmm. and, I really appreciate both of them just for the impact they've left on me as a person. Like, so if 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 I could do something to like bring them back, man, I I, I would do anything I could in the world to do so. Yeah. And then the last question I have for you is, where do you see yourself in five years? See myself in five years, um, probably somewhere on the west coast. Mm -hmm. Um, just living life. Mm -hmm. Um, just doing the things that I love to do, which is just making music, um, being surrounded by the people I love and the people I, that support me and all the stuff I do, and just continuing to just try and be myself, if anything. Like, mm -hmm. um, if the music stuff doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Like, mm -hmm. it's cool for me, because I still have college ahead of me. I still have all these things, all these other plans for me that are in place as well, just in case, like, the music stuff doesn't work out, even though I'm saying it's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, um, just as a backup and just all of that is just in five years I don't even know who I'll like truly truly be yeah. um guess only time will tell but hopefully I'll I'll be like sort of up like I, I wouldn't mind if I was like I wouldn't mind getting signed or something like that like that's nothing nothing bad for me or like stuff like that but um I should really like I, I don't really like envision myself doing something any like crazy like five years from now, really just being, still doing what I do, like waking up, making music, going to school, if I still am in school, like doing all these things that I like to do, just like being myself, because that's all I can really do at the end of the day.